Well, Ralph survived. Remember what happened yesterday? The last time we read, I should say, when he um, got under the bed and Keith's mom saw him. Remember how he escaped? Ran up into his shirt. We're going to find out what happens today in the next chapter. So chapter six is called a peanut butter sandwich. I told you to be careful, scolded Keith when his parents had gone to, to dress and Ralph had crawled down his arm and into his hand. It wasn't my fault the door blew shut. Ralph jumped from the, from the hand to the bedspread, from the hand to the bedspread. Though Keith was a friendly boy, even a, even a generous one, Ralph still did not like the feel of skin against his paws. It must be terrible to go through life without fur and such a nuisance having to wear clothes that had to be washed and drip dried. <sighs> Ralph knew all about drip drying. By the way, we usually put our clothes in dryers, right? Well, a long time ago, people would drip dry clothes, which means they would hang them on the line. Perhaps your families do that in the spring or summertime. You wouldn't want to do it in the winter, would you? But people used to do it even inside. Anyway, um, Ralph knew all about drip drying. Many were the drops of water from shirts and slips that he had dodged going out of his mouse hole. He didn't have to stay out so long. Keith pointed out as he began to dress. What's the use of having a motorcycle if you can't go tearing around staying out late? Ralph asked reasonably. You don't have a motorcycle, said Keith. I just let you use mine and you better be careful. I like that motorcycle and I don't want anything to happen to it. I'll take care of it, promised Ralph, somewhat chastened. I don't want anything to happen to it either. It's going to be harder to get a chance to ride it now that my mother has seen you, said Keith. She's a terribly good housekeeper and she's sure to complain to the management. Speaking of breakfast, you people are too tidy, complained Ralph. I'm not getting enough to eat around here. You don't leave any crumbs. Oh, I never thought of that, said Keith. What would you like to eat? <gasps> Ralph was astounded. This was the first time in his life anyone had asked him what he would like to eat. It had always been a question of what he could get his paws on. You mean I have a choice? He asked, incredulous. Sure, said the boy. All I have to do is order it when we go down to breakfast and then bring you some. Ralph had time to think. After a diet of zwieback and graham crackers provided by little children, bits of candy and an occasional peanut for apple core left by medium-sized children or a crust of toast or a dab of jam left by an adult who had ordered breakfast sent up from room service. The possibilities of choosing his own meal were almost too much. Um, I know what I'd like, Ralph said at last, but I don't know what you call it. Once some people who said they were almost out of money stayed in these rooms. They had four children and all of them hungry and they couldn't afford to go to the dining room. So they got some bread and spread. Let's see if we can figure it out. Spread it with something brown out of a jar and put some more bread on top of that. They whispered all the time they were eating because they didn't want the maid or bellboy to know they were having a meal in their room. And afterwards, they all got down on their hands and knees and picked up every single crumb off the carpet so no one would guess they had eaten in their rooms. It was a great disappointment. Oh, it smelled so good, like peanuts, only better. Did you guys figure out what it was? The boy laughed. It was a peanut butter sandwich. Sure, I'll bring you a peanut butter sandwich or part of one. I'll eat part of it myself. It'll be kind of a funny breakfast, but I won't mind that. Where will you leave it? Asked Ralph. Hmm, he thought a minute. Well, where do you live? In the knot hole under the window. No kidding, Keith laughed. That's the hole I poked my finger in last night. I'll say you did, said Ralph. Scared me out of a year's growth. Nobody has ever guessed it's a mouse hole before. It's a knot hole instead of a chewed hole. I tell you what, said Keith. I'll bring up part of a peanut butter si sandwich and poke it through the knot hole. Just like room service. Ralph could not have been more pleased with the suggestion. Uh, what about the motorcycle, he asked. Where are you going to leave that? In my suitcase, I guess. Oh, come on, pleaded Ralph. Have a heart. Leave it someplace where I can get it while you're out during the day. You're supposed to be in your mouse hole, asleep, not riding around in the daylight when people can see you. Oh, gee whiz. Can't a fellow even look at it, asked Ralph. 
I bet you like to look at those big motorcycles yourself. Oh, yes, I do, admitted the boy. Well, I'll leave it back under the bed, like I said, but you promise not to ride it until after dark? Scout's honor. Ralph jumped off the bed and ran to, off to the knot hole. Ralph's home was furnished with a clutter of things people drop on the floor of a hotel room. Bits of Kleenex, hair, ravelings. His mother was always planning to straighten it out, but she never got around to it. She was always too busy fussing and worrying. Now, as Ralph expected, she was dividing rye crisp crumbs among his squeaky bunch of little brothers and sisters while she waited to scold him. Ralph, if I have told you once, I have told you a thousand times, she began. Guess what? Interrupted Ralph in an attempt to change the subject. Somebody in 215 is going to bring us a real peanut butter sandwich. Ralph. Ralph, cried his frightened mother. You haven't been associating with people. Oh, he's just a boy, said Ralph, deciding to keep the complete story of the dangers and the glories of the past night to himself. He wouldn't hurt us. He, he likes mice. But he's a person, said his mother. Do you see how I knew how to read that? Like, lean into it. See that how it's, it's like that? It's almost like a bolded word. It's called italicized. That doesn't mean he has to be bad, said Ralph. Just like Pop used to say, people shouldn't say all mice are timid just because some mice are, or that all mice play when the cat's away just because some do. Just the same, Ralph, said his mother. I do wish you'd be more, more careful with whom you associate with. I'm so afraid you'll fall in that wrong with the wrong sort of friends. I'm growing up, said Ralph. I'm getting too old to hang out or hang around the mouse nest all the time. I want to go out and see the world. I want to go down to the ground floor and see the kitchen and the dining room and the stereo room and the garbage cans out back. Oh, Ralph, cried his mother. Not the ground floor, not all the way down there. You aren't old enough. Yes, I am, Ralph, said Ralph stoutly. There's no telling what you might run into down there. Mouse traps, cats, poison. Why, out by the garbage cans, you might even be seen by an owl. I don't care, said Ralph. Someday I'm going downstairs. But think of the owls, Ralph, implored his mother. We moved into the hotel because of the owls. It was after your uncle Leroy disappeared. His bones were found in an owl pellet. I don't know if you know what an owl pellet is, but after owls eat their prey, they will spit up the parts that they don't digest, like the fur and the bones and things. So that's what they found his bones in an owl pellet. That's so sad. The mother mouse's plea was interrupted by the sound of Keith returning to two, room 215. Well, now you'll see, said Ralph to his mother and waited anxious as his friend let him down. Sure enough, Keith came to the knot hole. Psst, he whispered. Here it is. The waitress thought I was crazy ordering a peanut butter sandwich along with my cornflakes for breakfast. But here it is. He stuffed half a sandwich, a bit of a, he stuffed half a sandwich a bit at a time into the hole where Ralph seized the pieces and pulled them all the way through. Listen, we're going to be gone almost gone most of the day. The dining room is, pa is packing us a picnic lunch and we're going to drive along some of the back roads and visit some old mining towns. Oh, thanks a lot, Ralph managed to say with his mouth watering. Have fun. See you tonight, said Keith. Have a good day's sleep. Ralph's mother could not help being impressed by the sight of the peanut butter sandwich. Just like room service, she marveled. Why, it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, and it even has butter in it. I told you he would bring it. Ralph could not help boasting, even with his mouth full. After sharing his feast with his squeaky little brothers and sisters, all of whom had terrible time with the peanut butter sticking to their teeth, Ralph curled up in a heap of shredded Kleenex and took a good long nap. When he awoke refreshed, his first thought was of the motorcycle. He wondered if Keith really had remembered to leave it under the bed. He yawned and stretched and left by way of the knot hole. Room 215 was just as Ralph had last seen it. The bed had not been made, and there were no fresh towels by the wash basin. Ralph ducked under the sheets and blankets that had tumbled off one side of the bed. 
and there, in the dim light, he caught the gleam of chromium exhaust pipes. Keith had trusted him after all. He walked across the carpet and took hold of the hand grips one more. They felt just right in his paws, and he longed to be off speeding around the threadbare spots of the carpet. But a promise, it was a promise. Keith had kept his promise about the peanut butter sandwich. Ralph would keep his about not riding the motorcycle in the daytime. He tried to satisfy himself by walking around the motorcycle in the dim light under the bed, admiring all over again the sleek design of the machine. Ralph was lost in admiration and daydreams of speed and power when suddenly the door opened and the maid entered. It was too late to make a dash for the mouse hole. The maid stripped the blankets and sheets from the beds, sh shedding unwelcome light on Ralph and motorcycles. Have you ever seen that? So she's taken off all the sheets to wash them, I imagine. Her feet in white sneakers moved lightly as she gathered up the sheets and pillowcases and towels and dropped them with a soft plop beside the open door. The next thing Ralph knew, he was hearing familiar and dreaded footsteps coming down the hall, steps he had learned to fear when he was a tiny mouse. It was the head housekeeper, the woman who was in charge of all the maids in the hotel. He recognized her steps and he recognized her shoes. Stout, sensible, black, Oxfords, they look like this. Nothing was ever clean enough for the head housekeeper and Ralph's whole family lived in dread lest she discover their mouse hole. Now, oh, he held his breath, hoping she would go down the hall. But no, she stepped in to room 215. Good morning, Marjorie, the housekeeper spoke crisply to the maid. Be sure to clean 215 and 216 very thoroughly this morning. There has been a complaint from the guests. They su suspect mice. Oh, yes, ma'am, said the maid. Look behind all the drawers, continued the housekeeper, and in the corners of the closets. Please report report any evidence of mice and be sure you vacuum under the beds. You have been getting careless lately. And with that, she walked briskly down the hall. Old grouch, muttered the maid as she reached into the hall for something that produced a sound that struck terror in Ralph's heart. If you don't want to scare him, think about it. She reached for something. It was the clang of vacuum cleaner attachments banging together. So I want you to think about that's the end of our chapter. The next chapter is going to be called The Vacuum Cleaner. But I want you to think about that. So um, if you were a mouse and you had those, you know what a vacuum attachment is where they can like stick and really get close. And so she's probably going to go under the bed. And who's under the bed? Man, we'll have to wait and see what happens next time. Have a great day.